All right. Looks like everyone is settled here. So today we're going to have a live demo from Pete Ramsey with Klein. They're going to be demoing HiPack running on a Klein sonar, and he's going to give us some, uh, some more information on that. And I will pass it over to Pete here. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, can you guys hear me OK? Yes, you're coming through great. OK, excellent. Uh, thanks to everybody for attending. We have an announcement today. We've got a HiPEC exclusive announcement. We're about to show you, you guys are going to see the very first world debut of the Klein 4K UHR side scan sonar. This is an ultra high resolution side scan sonar. That's what the UHR actually stands for. And uh, we, we only completed development on the system last year in December. So it's basically, it's a month old. It's not productionized yet, but we were brave enough to, to show it to you. Uh, this is a focused 600, 900 kilohertz ultra high resolution. And I'm very fortunate to be working with a good friend of mine, uh, Ken Jackson from Terra Aquatic Surveying and Mapping. Uh, there's Ken's photograph on the um, right hand side. And uh, Ken is, a, is an excellent land surveyor and hydrographer based in Del Rey in Florida. So if you've got any survey requirements, have a chat to Ken. But so what I'm going to cover in this presentation is obviously an overview of this brand new system, the Klein 4K UHR. I'll touch on a little bit on our automatic target recognition system, which is called Spectral AI. We'll then go through side scan setup, deployment and retrieval, and then flick into HiPack. We'll have a look at the shell setup, geodesy, hardware, and a little bit of line planning. But I'm very sure that you've been ably instructed by Daniel uh, earlier on today. Then we'll go into a live demo in Sonar Pro, and then a live de demo in IPAC with real-time mosaicing. So we've set ourselves a lot of challenges here. Uh, we have an experimental side scan, and uh, just be patient if we have any, any problems, but I don't think we will. Okay, so where does this uh, brand new side scan actually fit in? So if you look at the, at the very top model over here, this is the client 4K survey. Um, we demonstrated this at Long Beach at HiPAC last year. And this is, um, was the very first professional series survey system that we developed exclusively for the wind farm industry. Right, so just below that is the second in this family of professional sonars. And uh, this is a focus 600, 900 kilohertz system with an altimeter. And uh, what we've designed the system for is the professional survey market for unexploded ordnance, offshore renewable cable route surveys, and oil and gas. It has a 300 meter maximum range. And some of our other sonars are listed below. Uh, the Max View, which is in the middle, is a focus 600 kilohertz with a gap filler. And uh, Daniel was telling you a little bit earlier on about um, how you guys are now supporting processing of the gap fill data. Below that is the Klein 4000, which is a more long range uh, sonar, 100, 400 kilohertz. And then our more cost effective sonars, the 4900, which is mainly used for search and recovery. Right, so let's go into the actual topic of today, which is the 4K UHR. And this is designed by surveyors for surveyors in support of ultra high resolution surveys. Right, so it's a simultaneous dual frequency focused 600, 900 kilohertz. Now what we do is we mechanically focus the transducer and that gives you the equivalent resolution of a 900 kilohertz to a 1.6 megahertz sonar. But it doesn't suffer from the, the limited range that you get with these very high frequency sonars that they, they don't get more than about 20 or 30 meters of range. And also by using a low frequency and focusing it, it's more motion tolerant too. Um, in line with our rest of our professional survey series, uh, we have a, 306, a 360 kilohertz dedicated altimeter, pressure sensor and heat pitch roll sensors. With the focus 600 uh, kilohertz transducer, you can expect about 120 meters of range either side, uh, 240 meters of swath. 
And with the Focus 900 kilohertz, you can get about at least 40 meters of range and 80 meters of swath. It's depth rated to 300 meters. And uh, because of the altimeter that we fit in, um, it has a true bottom tracking algorithm, and we'll be able to demonstrate this to you today. It easily interfaces to all the magnetometers and USBL systems, and it exceeds all the industry standards for offshore renewable and oil and gas survey ops. I think you'll be quite impressed with the imagery as well. So this is the vessel that we're using. This is uh, Ken Jackson's vessel, the Terraquatic. It's a 25 foot safe boat. Um, and if you have a look at the rear of the vessel, we have our cable counter, We've got a small winch here, and all the equipment's housed in the cabin. Uh, here's the small winch that we're using. It's a, um, a winch that you can actually get from Klein. It's hand operated, it's got a hand crank. You can motorize it as well. Um, it has a little slip ring on it, and it's, it's quite nice. So you'll notice that we've actually pre marked the cable as well. You'll see a little green label on the cable. So we pre-marked this cable at five meter intervals. And then just below, you can see the towfish lying on the deck. So we took this photograph yesterday. So this is this uh, new pre-production system that we're going to be demonstrating. Right, we're using a cable counter um, for our cable out measurements. And uh, we're using the hydrographic product system. And you can see the cable counter and the sheet block. But in terms of towfish positioning, there are different ways that you can actually position a towfish. Obviously, the way we're doing it at the moment, where you mark the cable and then you run a cable counter, you mark the cable just to calibrate the cable counter. Or you can use acoustic positioning, where you're using an ultra short baseline acoustic positioning system with a beacon on the actual towfish. Uh, the yellow beacon you can see actually tied on the towfish cable. So we're not using that positioning system today, but uh, we often do that sort of thing. So that's in terms of towfish positioning. In terms of the data that you're going to be seeing, I mentioned that this is a Focus 600, 900 kilohertz system. And here's an example that we collected um, last month in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. This is Focus 600 kilohertz data, which has the equivalent of a 900 kilohertz in terms of resolution. And you can see the sand wave field beautifully there up to 75 meters. And as I mentioned, you can go as far as 120 meters with this uh, particular transducer. Now I have a look at the focused uh, 900 kilohertz data. Now this is at 25 meter range. And you can just see how exceptional the quality of the data is. This is equivalent to about a 1.6 megahertz sonar, but it gives you much more range and much more motion tolerance. So you can see very, very fine details in the sonar data. You can see a whole lot of targets. And um, you, this is what we're going to be demonstrating today, this very, very high resolution data. I'll just tell you that we don't have great conditions out here at the moment. Uh, we've got about a 20 knot wind and it's pretty choppy out here. So we will do the best to, to get the best data we can. Right, with all client systems, uh, you can purchase uh, an, a software and hardware add-on, which is our automatic target recognition system. We call it Spectral AI. And uh, this is probably one of the most advanced uh, ATR systems in the market. Uh, it's based on the latest convolutional neural network technology. And if you want to know more about it, uh, pop around to the client booth and we'll tell you all about it. So this is a great system. Um, it's going to revolutionize how side scan data is targeted and interpreted. Right, so where are we working at the moment? Uh, the red circle indicates where you guys are on the hydrographic chart that you see there. And the green box is where we are at the moment. So we're in the middle of the bay, um, right in the harbor channel. And uh, that's where we're going to be demonstrating this sonar. Right, and this is a quick demonstration of how easy client side scans are to, to put into the water. And this is Ken actually deploying the side scan. So you see one, one man deployment, he's putting it in the water. Uh, we took a video of this yesterday. It's just feeding out. We had much better conditions yesterday, as you can see. Once the cable's fed out, you can put the motors into gear and uh, you're ready to rock and roll. So that's it. But the next thing we're going to look at, just let me close down this presentation. And we're going to go into the high pack shell. So to tell you, this is how we did the line planning. 
So you can see we've got three lines that we're going to show to you over here. A typical line planning situation. Now we're going to be running our sonar at 40 meter scan range, which means that we get 80 meters of swath and we're going to be spacing our lines 70 meters apart. So we're only getting 10 meters of overlap between each of the lines, but for this sort of thing, it's sufficient. Uh, we have a little target over here in the chart. We're not quite sure what it is, but I'm sure it will be revealed once we put the side scan in the water and have a look at that. The geodesy was configured. This project was configured as UTM NAD 83 zone 16. We're using meters. If you know from my accent, uh, I'm not particularly fond of using feet. Uh, we're not using RTK tide because we're not doing multi-beam. Uh, tide is immaterial to side scan sonar. So that's the geodesy that's been quickly set up. Let's go into the hardware. And so the hardware set up, we've actually in um, high sweep survey, we've clicked the box that says side scan devices on towfish. And under the side scan devices, we've said include and include on the towfish too. We're time stamping everything to the GPS signal. In terms of the GPS, uh, we're just using a serial input. So we are using a um, Equinox, SPG Equinox system, and we are spinning out so the signals out of there. Uh, we're taking out GGA and heading, and uh, obviously we're getting our timestamps and things like that from there. So that's all that's coming out of the, uh, the SPG Equinox at the moment, which we're using for positioning. So that's the GPS setup, and we're just connecting to it over a COM port, COM6 on our computer. Then we go into the well, one other thing I want to show you is we have um, a vessel shape file. So that's uh, the shape of Ken's boat. Then under the side scan mobile, we have the Towfish DLL, and this is actually set up to read the cable counter on COM5. So I'll just go to the setup. This is where you actually put in the offsets. Um, Ken, Ken has a, a bolt in the deck where uh, all the positioning is valid from. We measured from there to the sheep block. There's zero offset in the X. Um, it's 2.31 meters to the top of the sheath block, and the sheath block sits 1.6 meters above the water. And the only other thing we've done here is put in the catenary factor for the cable. Of um, We're using a very short cable. We only have five meters of cable deployed, and uh, we're using a catenary factor of 0 0.96, 0 0.92 to get accurate uh, readings of our layback. Hey, Peter, can I? Uh, ben, can you hear me, Peter? Yeah, I can. Can you quickly go over the um, go back into the towfish setup? Sure. We had a, a question earlier about how you are getting the the depth. Um, uh, one of our one of our uh, Attendees was had a specific question about getting a Klein depth into the towfish, so maybe you could quickly mention that. Yeah, sure. It's, um, Klein always has bottom tracking. Now we do bottom tracking. I'm, I'm getting a lot of feedback now, Daniel. Yeah, Klein always does bottom tracking using the either traditional transducers or you could do your bottom tracking by our dedicated altimeter. You can actually set that up in Sonar Pro. So if you want the depth to come from the Klein system, which is the most accurate way of doing it, you'll select this Klein interface and the depth sensor, and it will automatically read the data from the Klein sensor and put that into HiPAC. Does that answer your question? Uh, I think so. Uh, is that good for you? I think I was talking with you earlier about this, about the, the towfish depth sensor, or am I, am I mistaken? Uh, I, I can take this offline, Daniel. Sure. Yeah, let's let's take this offline and we can uh, talk to the guy about that. Um, in setting up the towfish, we are just using the, we don't have a new driver for this yet in HiPAC uh, because it's a brand new system. So we're just using the 4K survey uh, device driver, which connects to the sonar by Ethernet. Uh, there's the address of the TPU of the sonar and no offsets to input here. And the setup's pretty, uh, just using the boat heading as our heading, and that's it. So that's hardware for you. I'm going to not save my changes. 
Right, so we've actually done hardware setup and everything like that. So we are pretty much ready to start surveying. So, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk you through, before we start surveying, I'm just going to talk you through uh, Sonar Pro, which is a client's package. So we are actually going to connect to the Towfish now. You ready, Chelsea? Yep. Right, so we're going to put in the IP address. There's the IP address of the TPU. We don't need to go through the survey wizard because Pete knows what he's doing. And we're going to push play. And now we are getting side scan sonar data. So let me, what we've done at the top waterfall over here is the high frequency data. This is 900 kilohertz focus data. And we have 600 kilohertz focus data in the lower window. You can see how beautiful the quality of this data is. Look at how robust the bottom tracking is in this area as well. You'll go through fish and everything like that and uh, won't even pick them up. All right. Notice we are getting our cable counter input of five meters. That's coming in from the cable counter. You can set that up very easily in Sonar Pro as well. And here we have our navigation screen with an nautical chart in the background. And you can see the Sonar Swath data being painted on top of that. So again, very high quality data. These, this, this is our sensor window, which shows you what your heap pitch roll is. Um, not, not heap, but sorry, the depth and pitch and roll of the towfish and the altitude. There's our current survey speed. And uh, there's our positioning information. And the important thing is to, to look at the pitch of the towfish. Um, we like to pitch our towfish slightly positive, so about plus one degree so is ideally where you want to be there. So we're pretty much all ready now. Uh, we can start recording data. So I'm going to start recording data in client's SDF format, and it's writing this also into the, the HiPAC project. I'm then going to go into HiPAC. So I've got Sonar Pro running. I'm going to go into HiPAC. I'm going to start up survey and high scan. Close this round. We're just busy turning on to line. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, see where we are. And we're going to start with uh, Ken. Can you confirm we're starting with line one? That's correct. Okay. And we're going to run it in uh, the which direction? Uh, that direction. With the... Okay. So I'm going to zoom in and you can see the vessel with a towfish being towed behind it. What we're doing now is we are just heading up to the start of the very first line. You can see the cable count is working nicely. We've got five meters of cable out. Altitude of the towfish is eight meters at the moment because we're going quite fast. Ideally, what you want to do is to tow your towfish between 10 to 15% of the scan range above the bottom. So at 40 meter scan range that we currently have, 10% of that would be four meters off the bottom and 15% would be six meters off the bottom. And uh, because we have an unknown object here, uh, we're going to tow it about six meters off the bottom just to be safe. So that's what we're going to do. Right, so we're starting to come onto line now. And uh, I've set up the mosaicing to do a 25 centimeter mosaic. Uh, tell me when you're ready, Ken. So here's the data, and this is the 900 kilohertz data, and I'm going to start logging. And I'm now generating a real time hey, 25 Pete. centimeter mosaic. Hey, Peter. Yeah. Can you minimize the uh, bottom right corner, the live demo window? How's that? Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So, what you can do is you can either target on the mosaic if you see anything, or you can target um, on the waterfall. So I don't want to change the, the waterfall at the moment because we're only showing you the 900 kilohertz and I'm working on a tiny little laptop screen here. But you can see the mosaics being generated really nicely. And uh, we currently, what is our speed at the moment? Five, yeah, five nine. knots. So we're probably going a little bit fast, but that's fine. Um, and we don't have great conditions at the moment and the, the data quality looks pretty good to me. Oh, there's a target over there. So we could actually mark that target. So there's the target. You can reposition it. You can measure everything and you can give it a name as well. So we'll just give that a name. Uh, we'll call this target the Daniel target. How's that? Okay. 
closing. So that, that target's been saved. Uh, we're getting to the end of the first line. Uh, we haven't really seen anything besides that one little target. So I'm going to get to the first line and I'm going to log off because uh, mosaicing on a turn is, is not the best plan in the world. So there we go, logged off and we are about to start line two. And notice that that mosaic, I'm going to zoom out, uh, is actually pretty good. There's the real-time mosaic. Right. Our very confident uh, helmsman here, Brian, is bringing us around quickly. Data's looking great still. Notice how robust the bottom tracking is. We're coming around. We're going to start slowing down. And tell me when you're ready, Brian. We're good now. Okay, guys, we're going to start logging and generating real-time mosaics. Right, so again, this is a 25 centimeter mosaic. Go and zoom in a little bit. Notice the very, very good matching. Now, this is a combination of a really good sonar and the, the robust support that actually client provide for real-time mosaicing. Uh, the blending there is actually very good considering that this is a real-time survey. I mean, you could probably quite happily get off the boat with this as a, almost a final product. Are we doing speed-wise? Yep, that's perfect. All looking good. Let's keep this nice and straight and let's see what this target is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what this target looks like in Sonar Pro, and I'm only going to show you the high frequency. So we're going to just look at the high frequency data in Sonar Pro. That bottom looks absolutely amazing. Uh, you can see these pop marks over here. That's generally um, some biological material, you know, something burrowing in there. And here we have, looks to me to be a wreck. Yeah, it's a wreck and it's a yacht. You can see the, the masts, the sails. And uh, you can see a couple of objects over there as well. Let's go have a look at what that looks like in real time mosaic over here of that wreck. And we could see it quite nicely in that data. So you could target that on the mosaic. I'm just going to target it on the mosaic and you can go and um, give it a name if you want to. And a couple of other interesting little targets here, the waterfall. You can go and zoom in on those targets and, uh, you know, save them out as geotips. And you can uh, do mensuration, which means you can measure the height and length and width of that target. Right, so beginning almost to the end of the second line, uh, we have one more line to go. And you can see that mosaic's looking pretty good at the moment. So I'm going to log off. And Brian's going to very capably swing us around onto the next line. While he's doing that, we can go look at the data in Sonar Pro. Now remember, the data never looks great in a turn, but um, that data doesn't look too bad. What I want to demonstrate to you here is how good the bottom tracking is. Look at all this noise in the water column, which you can see from our turn. Our very robust altimeter has actually ignored that completely and has tracked the bottom perfectly. Bottom tracking is the most time consuming thing you could do when you're processing uh, side scan sonar data. Right, so we're going back to IPAC now and we're coming onto line and uh, I'm a bit late, but I'm going to start logging now. That was my mistake. Right, so here we go. We might see that little bit of that wreck on the next line. Remembering we only have about uh, 10 meters of overlap. Let's go and have a look at what that data looks like. So this is focused 900 kilohertz data that we're mosaicing at 40 meter scan range. Oops, we've got a little glitch there. That was just, occurring with yeah. Us. We're probably going a little bit faster. We just didn't uh, paint those pixels in. Probably see just a little bit of that mast over there. A little bit of an offset in the data which means I should probably adjust that category value from 0.92 to maybe about 0.95 or 96. So we're getting almost to the end of the survey. The 
data is still looking really nice. Mosaic's looking good. Right, and I'm going to log off now. So I'm logging off and I'm zooming out a little bit. Right, so we've now finished our survey, guys. That was pretty easy, and we've done a real-time mosaic of 25 centimeters. So let's go have a look at that in the shell. Exiting out of here. Going to the high pack shell. Switch on the real-time mosaic. And voila, there is the real-time mosaic of the data with the targets and the wreck in the middle as well. So that's all done in a very short space of time. Um, any questions, Daniel, from your side or any tips and tricks you think I should talk about? Uh, sure. Uh, we have one question, and I'll repeat that back to you. Sure. Uh, I'm just having to come very close to the speakers. It's pretty noisy on the boat. Sure. What sort of resolution can you expect at 900 kilohertz at, say, 60 meters, is, is the question. Okay, um, I would not use a focused 600 kilohertz system at 60 meters because the simple reason is you've got to think of it as a 1.6 megahertz system. At the moment, we're saying that we're only going to support up to about 40 to 50 meters of range, you know, with a system. So if we take... Uh, if we take that into account, let's let's say we do as if we're doing a 40 meter um, survey now, you are looking at an a long a cross track resolution of 2.4 centimeters in the raw data and then a long track at about, let's say you're running at four and a half or five knots, you're going to be getting about 10 or 11 centimeters, say 10 in an, a long track. So that would be your resolution, 2.4 centimeters by about 10 centimeters. Sure, and that's and that's up to forty meters range. That's up to forty meters of range, yes. All right. If if you if you drop the range down a little bit down to about twenty five, you're going to get about anywhere between uh, let's say six and seven, uh, six to eight centimeters in an along track direction, and two point four centimeters in an across track direction. This is a very very high resolution sonar. Um, the, the average beam width is 0.2 degrees. So, And for anyone who doesn't know, um, 40 meters would be about 120 feet. Um, any yeah. other questions? I'm going to sweep along here looking for hands. Anything at all? <laughs> um, it looks like we're all set for questions, Peter. Um, this was this okay. was really remarkable. This is uh, invaluable um, to see this stuff in in action, especially for anyone who hasn't used HiPEC for uh, acquisition. Um, thank you so much to you and Klein and, and Mitchum Industries for um, hosting this and uh, uh, letting us come along on your on your boat ride. Yeah, excellent. And a big thanks from our side to uh, to Ken Jackson and his team at Terra Aquatic for providing the boat and, and all of the moral support and uh, camaraderie on board. Yep, and uh, you'll be back at your booth for the rest of the day, I assume? Yeah, I'll, I'm heading back right now, so if you give me about just over half an hour, I can be back at the booth. Sure. Thank you so much, Peter. Good. Again, signing off, guys. All right. Bye, Peter. Bye.